Ode to Jackson Pollock. Hand swinging the loops of paint, splashes, drips, chic lavender, duenda black, blue and red. Jackson Pollock, my sorrow is selfish. I won't meet you here. I see your crossings of paint. We are lost in the cloud of our gestures. The smoke we make with our arms. I cry to my beloved too. We are lost in lovelessness. Our sorrows before us. Copy them in air. We make their postures with our stance. They grow before us. The lean, black she-wolves on altars of color. We search our remembrance for memories of heroic anguish. We put down our pain as singing testimony. Gouges, corruptions, wrinkles held loose in the net of our feelings and hues. We crash into their machinery, making it as we believe. I say we, I, you. You saw the brightness of pain, ambition. We give in to the lie of beauty and the step of creating, make lies to live in. I mean you held yourself in animal suffering. You made your history of pain making it real for beauty, for ambition and power, invented totems from teacups and cigarettes, put it all down in disbelief, waiting, forcing. Each gesture painting caught on to the method of making each motion, your speech, your love, your rack, and found yourself heroic, huge, burning with your feelings like making money makes the body move, calls you to action swirling the paint and studying the feeling, caught up in the struggle and leading it for the beauty of animal action and freedom of full reward, to see it down and praise and admiration, to lead, to feel yourself above all others. No matter what, it's there. No one can remove it. Done in full power, liberty and Jackson Pollock, the creator, the mind is given credit. You strangle the lean wolf beloved to yourself, guardians of the secret, and found yourself the secret, spread in clouds of color, burning yourself and falling like rain, transmuted into grace and glory, free of innocence, containing all, pressing experience through yourself onto the canvas. Pollock, I know you are there. Pollock, do you hear me? Spoke to himself. Beloved, as I speak to Pollock into the air and fall short of the body of the beloved hovering always before him, her face, not a fact, memory, or experience, but there in the air, destroying confidence, the enormous figure of her mystery, always there in trappings of reason, worked at his sureness, demanding her place beside him, called from the worlds of paint, asked for a face and shoulders to stand naked before him to make a star. He, pulling the torn parts of her body together to make a perfect figure, 1951, assembled the lovely shape of chaos, seeing it bare and hideous, new to the old eye, stark black and white, the perfect figure lying in it, peering from it, and he gave her what lips and lovely face he could from the squares, angles, loops, splashes, broken shapes he saw of all with bare eye and body.